Hey guys, Chris here for Tuman's Guitars and Basses. In today's Guitar Tech Tips video, we will learn how to set up your guitars, bridge and saddles. In this series, I want to show you how to get the most out of your guitars and how to fix the most common issues. I want to use as few special tools as possible to make it easier for you to follow my steps. You need three steps to set up your guitar properly, neck, nut and the bridge. This time we'll focus on the saddles and the bridge, but we also have episodes on neck relief and nut adjustment too. You'll find those episodes on the channel and uh, while you're there, maybe hit subscribe and ring the bell, would help us a lot, thanks. There are quite a few bridge types. Most common ones are the traditional trem, a floating trem or a fixed bridge. Let's start with the traditional trem. For that, you will need a fitting Allen key to adjust the saddles. The basic idea is to follow the fretboard radius with the saddles. On a tremolo like this, you have to do this per string manually. On a Gibson style bridge or on the flood rows, this is preset so they have the ideal radius already. You don't have to worry about this. Next important thing to know is that the low E string needs the most space and the high E string needs the least to ring out properly without too much fret buzz. How can you check if the strings are too low already? Well, check all the frets on the guitar and um, bend all the notes to see if there's too much fret buzz or if the notes choke out. You should, of course, always check the action while you're setting up the saddles. You do that at the 12th fret you can use some sort of a ruler. There are different tools for that. And um, I'll give you some numbers that can help you. Try two millimeters on the low E string, then 1.9, 1.8, 1.7, 1.6, 1 and 1.5 on the high E string. That's considered a basic setup. If you don't have too much fret buzz, you can of course go even lower than that. And that's how it should sound like. If you overdo it and go too low with the string, the fret buzz will become really annoying. It's not a big problem though. You can simply raise the string back to where it was. On most basses, you will do the same thing. You will have a saddle per string. You will just have to have the fitting Allen key to adjust the height. By the way, string action on basses should be a little higher than on guitars, but not a lot. I measure it here on the 12th fret. What was it, like 2.1, 2.2 millimeters on the E string and 2 millimeters on the G. On Telecasters, the whole procedure will be very similar. If you have six saddles, so one saddle per string, you do the same thing as on Strats. If you have the three barrel type saddles, you will have a screw per string. On most Gibson Epiphone guitars and guitars of other brands that are similar, you will have a tunematic style bridge. On this, you will find two wheels, one for the low E string, one for the high E string. You can adjust these strings per wheel and you don't even need a tool for that. As told before, you don't have to worry about the radius. Last but not least, Floyd Rose Bridge. It's not going to be that complicated. You have two posts here and here. With these, you can set up the action, the string action for the low E string, the high E string. And as told before, you don't have to worry about the radius. There's one really important thing to do. You have to release the tension on the strings before you do this. If you adjust the posts without releasing the tension on the strings, you will destroy these blade edges of the tram that sit on these posts. And now let's take this thread for a test ride. <clears throat> Let me know in the comment section what's your most feared bridge type to set up. And also, of course, if you have any questions regarding this subject. I'd love to see your suggestions too. So let me know in the comment section what you want to see in this series.
Don't be afraid of setting up and fixing your guitar yourself. It's time to become your own guitar tech. Cheesy!